Okay, that, that very interesting stuff there. And I'm joined by uh, a person who is most assuredly equally interesting and maybe takes us beyond, Chila. Chila Tolde. And Chila, you're a practitioner of yoga, yes? Yes, yes. You sir. love yoga. You're up at the yoga studio in Yori. I am a tutor of the yoga studio, yeah. yes. But you're a poet as well. Yes. And this is your first book of poetry, published Red Roots and Orange Sky. And the, the, the photograph on the front of it is interesting. Uh, can you capture that? I think it's got some significance. And tell the people about that photograph. Yes, uh, well, it, um, it was designed uh, by my partner, Alistair Livingston, who is also the, uh, in the yoga studio. But uh, the most interesting about the, the um, image is that it's my grandfather who was marching of May Day on this picture. Yeah. And that's actually about uh, my red roots. So mm, and what about Orange Sky? Orange Sky is, is where I am now. And <laughs> where are you now? <laughs> in Northern Ireland. Uh huh. Where and the sky is sometimes orange, but as opposed uh, to what color gray <laughs> in Hungary? <laughs> Would I or be right in blue, saying that? Blue. In it's blue in Hungary. Yes. So you have better climate there <laughs> than we do here. Yeah. So, did the yoga lead you into the territory of poetry, or the poetry lead you into yoga? I was writing poetry much earlier than doing yoga. Yes. Um, I was a young child when I started. I think many of us do it like that. And then it stayed with me, and it's a, it's a very important emotional release as well. Yes. Uh, but also because I'm a tutor of the Open University, hey. I teach creative writing. Wow. So I, I. Well, I your grandfather, like your grandfather's on the front of the book, and uh, the poem you're going to read for me now, the sewing machine, speaks of your grandmother, the okay. self-made woman, the mother of ten children. Yes. Now this is this is certainly biographical. Mm, yes. Well, I would like to read this because I think there are many women here who have so many children. <laughs> uh, Indeed ten they children. do. And, uh, Martyrs of sex. Uh, and the fine uh, line exactly. tells us. And uh, that, that's maybe the way it has been in mm, Ireland for a long yes, time. Yes. Right. Take us through so this lovely, lovely little poem. The sewing machine. The rattle of stitches, recycling coats, shirts and vests for each of the ten. Downed within the noise, memories of a mother who lived in sin. Quick, bring the needle to pin her down into the dark, bury her deep and forget the cruelty of the nuns who salvaged the soul and tucked the heart. The past knotted, the surface clean in Jesus' gentle hands. Entangle the thread, weave a halo around the head of the heroine of tough love, the martyr of sex. Wow, I tell you, the, the words coming through there, recycling of coats, mm. darned. Now, how many people nowadays would even know the word darned? Yes. <laughs> Few enough, I should think, you know. Uh, she, she, well, that was her life. I mean, looking after her ten children, and at the same time, the belief in Jesus and was that there. kept her, kept, kept her. her there. Hungary is it a is it a Catholic country? Uh, significantly oh, well, so. Both, both religions mm. um, and Jewish as well. So mm -hmm. it's mixed. Yeah. So you put the thoughts together into the book. Uh, how did you go about writing the book? What was your modus vivendi in doing it? Well, this, these are the poems of the last couple of years, really. Um, basically, I was asked uh, a lot of the time, how come I'm here? So this is the answer. Why you came here? <laughs> yes, this but is the But you followed your I heart here. You fell followed dear Alistair. <laughs> as well as, but, uh, you know, people were surprised why I'm here and what I'm doing here. But uh, actually, I started to think about the parallels between Hungary and Ireland. And, and I found many, yeah. many. So are there obvious even though ones we that are we so may far away, yeah. are there obvious parallels that may have escaped us? Well, one of them is actually the, the um, Ulysses by James Joyce. Oh, yes. And uh, what I found out through my research that uh, actually Ulyss um, Bloom's father, um, Leopold Bloom, was uh, born in Hungary according to the book. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and there is a place in, uh, in Hungary called Sombathei where they actually celebrate Bloomsday every really? year. Yes. So there's truth in it. So, uh, yes, truth in it. I, 
I made a documentary about that yeah. as well. So I'm a I'm a filmmaker, writer, poet, yes. alongside doing yoga. <laughs> The only one of those that I miss miss out on is the yoga. <laughs> so the, the 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 poetry, and the filmmaking, and the creative side of your 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 cerebral activity, that that takes care of that. But the did the yoga become necessary as a counterbalance, a physical creativity in a sense? It's interesting that um, if you practice your yoga for yourself as well, not just going to the studio, but for yourself as well, it becomes your lifestyle and. And the early mornings when I wake up, the the best time to get my ideas. Yes, of course. And so I do wa some yoga, then I meditate, and then I, I have my best ideas yeah, that I can can course. actually. So it, it And it the ideas it. come as as butterflies and land on our windowsill with the greatest of ease. <laughs> the only sin is not holding on okay. to the idea for the moment, and mm. it escapes and flies away mm. and leaves you barren. Yes, yeah, so it helps uh, to be creative. Actually, mm. helps with, and I actually am toying with the idea of bringing the two things together. So creative writing and, and yoga, yoga. Mm -hmm. and that might happen up at the yoga studio. Well, yes, and I think it would help people to develop their creativity through yoga. Yeah, I like your studio because it's airy, it's got space, it's got a, a feeling of uh, historic significance. Mm. It, it's a place where yoga and creativity live naturally, dare mm. I say. Mm. Well, the Abbey was, uh, you know, it was the Abbey Grammar School mm. originally first, yeah. and then now we are there in that same room, so it feels... In the same, you're in the science laboratory, <laughs> that's where it was. <laughs> Have we another one here that we look at as we draw our conversation in the direction of closure? What one would you recommend? Uh, We're there. There's. Uh, what have you got? Uh, I could read the kitchen. The kitchen. Hey, you're staying total domesticity here. Yes. What number of page is that on? Uh, Forty-three. Forty-three. We go towards the kitchen. Where are we here? And, and just to uh, say a few words about it. This is um, in the mornings when I sit in the kitchen and write <laughs> yeah. my morning pages. But also, uh, we had the yogi over here, yes. who is mentioned in this. So he, uh, the the conversation which I mentioned in the poem, happened with the yogi. With the yogi. <coughs> so the kitchen. How do kitchen. you get the hot chili in your eyes in the morning? What's that about? <laughs> you didn't push your hands. From the fingers of the night before. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're with you. So, with hot chili in my eyes. I nice and loudly for us, please. Okay. Start again. With hot chili in my eyes. I read between the lines a coded message of noises. A child's scream sheeted in wind blasts gushes through the cracks. The mandalay porcelain lock, clock riveting ticks between my shoulder blades. I carry my life like a snail. The fridge sighs, a boiler roars into motion. It broils the oil of the seas and heats my place, the kitchen at dawn. Clouds scrub the stratosphere with desert sand. A mad dog stuck in fear just shrills. The river at the bottom of our glen, shushing its song, cushions our senses. In the body's, body's kitchen, the heart spins unrelenting. Organs send impulses talking to each other. Thanks for the parcel, we enjoy the food. The universe of enzymes awakens. Matter is transformed, vibrations vocalize. My body goes from Gaza, letting through the particles of light, staunch at covering the wounds so absorbent. Beyond its wonders, I remember last night's cosmic dance at this table, a conversation about intelligence and order, and that we are bacteria in God's body. <laughs> Where does it come from? <laughs> For goodness well sake, this uh, is good poetry. It's beautiful. It's, um, we were talking about 
the, the largeness of the universe and that the size of a human can be as, as little as a bacteria in my body or yeah, in God's so body. In God's yeah. body. That's so fantastic. And there are good bacteria and bad bacteria. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Chile, where can folk get the book? Uh, well, this is uh, published by Lapwing, who, yeah. who are um, a very old uh, poetry publisher. Lapwing in Belfast. Yeah, yes. poetry publisher. So at on their website or my website. And your website is? And my website is, is chilatoldi.com. Chilatoldi.com. And that's spelled? C-S-I-L-L-A-T-O-L-D-Y. And then dot com. Or if they want to call up at the or yoga studio, studio, would be yes, the thing yes, to yes. do it. That mm. sounds good to me. Sheila, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you. You've been most thank kind. You thank you so much. And uh, there we are. That's Sheila on her way to other things. Coming shortly, we'll have, we'll have, uh, we're going to have some music now. Sean is going to make all of that happen. But shortly after that, I have the joy of being joined once again on the sofa by a friend, colleague, uh, mentor on some occasions, uh, <laughs> opponent in other cases. <laughs> we, we spar. We will spar with words, but we'll bring you a very, very important message. And if you're of a certain age and uh, a male, I suggest you stay closely tuned because what you're going to hear over the next half hour might well contribute to saving your life. Sean, take away the music for us, please. Go ahead.